Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, G4 iMac, is that you? Is Apple developing a desktop robo-arm to come as a next-gen home security iPad? But first, the UK Health Security Agency has issued an update on early contingency planning for MPOX after the World Health Organization discovered a surge in cases of the viral disease in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and at least 450 people are believed to have died in that initial outbreak. Evening Standard Health reporter Daniel Keane has the details. The UK Health Security Agency has come out today and said that the risk to the UK population is currently considered low, but they have begun sort of to plan to prepare for any cases that we, we might have in the UK. That has been criticism of health authorities in the UK of being slow to respond to the MPOC in the past, and I think they're trying to get ahead, essentially, of of a potential outbreak in the UK. And that means just scaling up rapid testing, making sure we have enough vaccines, and that we've got protocols in place. And Daniel explains what MPOX is. MPOX is a virus that has been around for many decades. But two years ago, it began to spread very rapidly in Africa, um, and cases eventually reached Europe. London actually became the epicentre of the outbreak in the UK. What the disease is, is essentially a a pretty nasty infection. Common MPOX symptoms include a skin rash or pus-filled lesions lasting up to a month along with fever headaches and swollen lymph nodes. You catch MPOX, which used to be called monkeypox, through close contact. And in the first and about initial outbreak two years ago, it was primarily men who, who have sex with men who contracted this, see due to the the close contact, uh, but it could also be caught from, you know, using the same towel as someone else. Uh, generally, sort of close skin, skin to skin contact. And Daniel has more on the WHO warning. What the World Health Organization is concerned about now is a new strain of the virus that actually emerged last year that's spreading at a very, very fast rate in Central Africa. And the outbreak, which initially began in the Democratic Republic of Congo, has now spread to neighbouring countries. So what they're trying to do is contain this spread before it goes beyond Central Africa to the rest of the continent and then potentially the rest of the world. Next. Not being able to communicate is so frustrating and demoralising. It is like you are trapped. It feels a lot like me. That's the AI-powered voice from a new brain-computer interface that's allowed Casey Harrell, a motor neurone disease patient in the US, to speak again. It makes people cry who have not heard me in a while. I hope that we are at a time when everyone who is like me have the same opportunity as I do to have a device like this that will help them communicate. Harold developed the neurodegenerative disorder ALS, which gradually paralysed him over five years and last July he lost his ability to speak. Researchers implanted sensors into his brain and Sergei Stavisky, assistant professor in the Department of Neurological Surgery at UC Davis Neuroprosthetics Lab in California, explains. In essence, what we're doing is we're bypassing the injury. We're recording kind of from the source from this part of the brain that's trying to send these commands to the muscles. And we're basically listening into that and we're translating those patterns of brain activity into the phonemes, so that's like a syllable, the unit of speech, and then the words that they're trying to say. Now, is Apple working on a futuristic desktop home robot project that could offer customers an all-in-one smart home command center, video conferencing machine and security droid? because Bloomberg's reporting the tech giant has a large team working on this apparent next-gen tabletop device that combines what's described as an iPad-like display with a robotic limb. Bloomberg tech reporter Mark Gurman writes sources tell him engineers are developing a thin robotic arm to move around a large screen which, if paired with Apple intelligence, could offer a powerful interactive home assistant. But can it be done for under a £1,000? You might have to wait a couple of years to find out. But doesn't the description sound a little like that design classic, the early noughties white G4 iMac? Next, a pair of NASA astronauts stranded on the International Space Station will now have to wait until the end of August to discover their boss's plans to bring them back to Earth. Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore are waiting to see if there's a fix the hobbled Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft 
that developed thruster faults en route to the ISS. Now they're being told to sit tight for a decision if the Starliner can be fixed for a return trip with the pair aboard or if the spacecraft must come back to Earth empty and a SpaceX rescue shuttle sent up for them. As previously reported by Tech and Science Daily, the worst case scenario is they'll remain aboard the ISS until February 2025. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, drone deliveries, Amazon green light for UK test flights. Why not hit follow? In the meantime, give us a rating. Welcome back. Amazon has been given the green light to test fly drones beyond a human controller's line of sight in the UK. That's paving the way for using the machines to deliver packages to homes. As part of a Civil Aviation Authority trial, the e-retailers' drones will take to the skies of Orkney, along with UAVs used by police, ambulance service and those inspecting wind turbines to see how these devices all interact together whilst airborne. Next. A study by the University of Southern California and Pennsylvania State University in the US suggests Australians are outliving Brits. Researchers say Aussies have a lower death rate for certain cancers and from heart and lung disease, as well as fewer deaths from drugs or alcohol. The study published in the journal BMJ Open examined life expectancies in Australia compared with five high-income English-speaking countries. Researchers found Australia had a high life expectancy advantage of four to five years over the US and up to two and a half years over Canada, New Zealand, Ireland and the UK. And finally... Researchers suggest the largest altar stone at the heart of Stonehenge is actually Scottish and not Welsh, as previously thought. The study involved scientists at Aberystwyth University, University College London and in Australia, Curtin University and the University of Adelaide. After work to examine the sandstone's chemical composition and mineral grains, scientists say with 95% confidence that it's very likely to have come from northeast Scotland. It's believed to have been placed within the central horseshoe of stones during the second construction phase between 2620 and 2480 BC. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Standard Podcast here in London and we'll be back on Friday at 1pm. See you then.